Hi, this is Philip with G6 Technology Services. So this is going to be our computer store vlog number two. And if you haven't seen the first one, I would recommend to go and do that before you do this one so you kind of know what's going on. So we're in the second store today, or the new store, and we're just going to be setting a few things up. I'm going to be cleaning up a little bit. And we're going to go over into the uh, back room and set up our switch and our IP phone and a wireless access point. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're in the back room. I brought some of this equipment over. We have our temporary battery backup. Uh, I will have a better unit in here in the future. We've got our phone. We have our 16 port PoE switch and our UAP AC light. So let's go ahead and get some of this stuff set up. Okay, so the first thing I think we'll do is get this battery backup set up. That way, if we have a little uh, brownout or a little blip in the power, uh, we don't reset our switch and uh, you know drop a call or, or whatever might be the case. So this should be perfectly fine for holding this switch for a few minutes. That's all we're really concerned with, not going for a super extended uh, runtime. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Okay, so let's get this thing out of the box. We'll see what's in here. Got our little packet with the USB cable, so probably won't end up using that. And then here's the unit itself. Oh, it's a little heavy. At that awkward angle, put this box out of the way. This piece of cable stuck on it. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get this plastic wrap off. Got some tape. Not a zip, or not a zip tie, what are these? Twist tie. Get that off of there. Alright, I'm going to pull the sticker off, which is just warning us to connect the battery. So we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, I got this receipt. Let's see, this was tested February 29th at 11.42 a.m. So that's good. It was tested by L. Alright, dump this battery out. Connect our red wire. Okay. There we go. All set. So we'll go ahead and set it on the uh, shelf here where it's going to go. All right. So we'll get our battery, put that, I guess like right here, and then we'll plug it in. And then we'll power it on for the first time. All is well so far. It's got to do its little self-test, and then we should get a, a solid green light whenever it's done. There we go. So that should pretty much be it. All right, now we've got our switch, and we're going to go ahead and connect our fiber. So it's uh, plugged into the SFP module already, just uh, because we were testing, and I threw away the little dust caps, and I didn't want to get the ends dirty. So we are going to go ahead and unplug that before we put the SFP module in. So there's our LC connector, so we just want to make sure not to touch the very end of it because it will make it dirty. Plug that in. And then we just plug this in. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. Okay, now that we've got that connected, we'll go ahead and plug in our power cord for our switch. Which is down here, tangled up with this Ethernet cable for this access point, which is going to slide off the shelf. Alright, and then we'll plug that into the yeah, battery plus surge. Oh, there we go, it's starting up. Alright, and then we've got our phone and our access point. So I'm just going to put this access point probably like up top here. Just to give it some height. And we'll get our cable. And then these will go into here. Okay, and then our phone will go into here. Just like that. So we're just waiting for this switch to start up, which I will not bore you with because that will take a minute or two, so we'll come back after that. Alright, our switch is starting up, it's finishing up its initialization procedure. We've got our blue square now, and we should have, you know, you can't really see because of the light, but we've got a light on our access point now, and I unplugged the phone just so we could watch it start up. Not that uh, it's really that exciting, but I don't know. Got to have something to show you. So this uh, Cisco IP phone, I think I've mentioned before, uh, the uh, SPA504G in the previous video. Uh, we've got that connected to our uh, free PBX server and that handles all of the calls for our business. Uh, we've got that of course trunked over this fiber line back to the other office where the actual phone server is which is one of those little mini Dell computers. So I would like to eventually get that set up on uh, ESXi but I just haven't gotten around to, um, you know, transferring, copying the uh, the file over and everything, you know, like capturing the uh, little SSD in that mini computer to a disk image, and then importing it into uh, ESXi. So looks like we're started up. They're started up. The uh, phone's working. Let's see. Yep. We're good. So now we've got uh, at least some stuff working in this little office. Just, you know, while we're in here setting things up, uh, in case anyone calls, we've got a phone. So I'll go ahead and turn up the volume just so I can hear it when I'm in the other room. And yeah, this doesn't look too pretty, but it will be rearranged a little bit when we get our network rack up there and we're going to put that access point like I said in the other video we're going to put that on the ceiling and the phone's going to be on a desk over here but we just need something set up in the meantime so while we're in here doing some improvements we at least have a phone and some Wi-Fi. So now I'm just going to get the ladder we're going to try and tuck some of these extra cables up into the ceiling because we don't need those. And I'm not actually sure what they even go to. So we'll just get this one up out of there. Get this out of the way. There we go. Much better. So we'll have to find another ceiling tile to replace that. So we're just going to do the same thing over here. Get some of these excess cables out of the way. And they actually stuck some kind of sign. Oh, it's a direct TV channel lineup. So I guess they lost the ceiling tile that goes up here. Oh no, there's something. 
Let me tuck some of this out of the way first. And the last people to rent this unit were direct TV marketers or something, so that would make sense. And this might be the tile that goes here. Very well be. Yeah, seems to fit. Okay, well, that's good. One less tile I have to replace. Okay, next thing we're going to change is this lock because I don't have a key to it. And this one is the one that goes into this main lobby. And that one does not need to open from the outside. We're just going to have a thumb turn on the inside and a blank plate on the outside. And then this doorknob is getting replaced with a different one that also does not lock at all. So you'd have to come in from around the back and then come in through this doorway and then undo the thumb turn to open up the lobby, which is exactly how I would want that workflow to go. So we'll swap this deadbolt out real quick and I'll just put you uh, on the tripod and try and do that as quickly as I can. All right, so we just have to remove the interior section of this plate. to try and break that loose. Let's swap that out for a, a flat blade and we'll try and just pry it. Oh, it's really on there. All right, well, I'm gonna have to work on that a minute. No need watching me struggle. Alright, yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was just painted on, so I just had to whack it with the screwdriver. I got that side to come off. Just gotta free the other side now. There we go. Oh, yeah, there's nice big thick paint rings right in there. Just gotta get this piece out. I already took the screws out. go. So we'll go through some of these pieces that it came with, see what's what. That's going to go into here, and then that's going to go through here. And that's going to be what actually turns the lock. So that's actually going to be backwards, so we'll flip that over. So that way is locked, that way is unlocked. So we will go ahead then and get this put in the door. And this is just going to go right in this existing hole, right like that. And then we'll add our screws. It's not quite sitting flush, but we'll close the door and see if it will clear. Now it's rubbing, so I think we're going to have to take a little bit out of this, the top of this. Okay, that might be enough. There we go. 
not cooperate. It's the next thing to go. All right, and it's dragging a little bit, but not much we can do about it. I don't have a, a better chisel to clear out more, so this will work for now. I'm going to go ahead and put our plate in on the, on the outside. put one of these screws in to keep it from falling down. And then I'm just going to have to put in the uh, thumb turn and the little lever that's going to actually turn it. Alright, so we just put this in here like that. I'm just got to line this up. Okay. Okay, there we go. Nice new deadbolt put in. Perfect. Okay, next we're going to change out this doorknob. So, pretty much the same procedure. We just take off the interior portion. Okay, so the new one, uh, it's already unpackaged because we actually installed it on a, a closet door, but they ran out at the store. I needed two, they only had one, so I'm just taking that one off and we're going to finish up this job. Okay. It's not ideal, but I might have to re-drill that because it kind of went in at an angle. So now, put in our handle. We'll get our other one. Okay, i got to try and get these screws to go in without this thing falling apart on me. Good. Yeah, there we go. Catches and latches just fine, but that's much better. So now, from the outside, we have a nice handle that's not going to get stuck. And it latches nice and securely so the door doesn't vibrate. And then with the deadbolt up here kind of gets stuck a little bit when the uh, door is shut so you have to kind of loosen it up and turn it and then you can latch this again so yes yeah, this, this door frame if you can tell see that gap it's not sitting in here level so there are some alignment issues but it's secure and it looks a lot better than the other one did and we're not going to get locked out uh, when the door decides to close itself and then the handle doesn't want to open so that's a good job done okay now this is the main door to get into the back room from the hallway we're going to change out this door handle with an electronic uh, deadbolt and uh, this is not the door that's going to stay here we're going to get a new one this one looks like it's been kicked in at some point or something so we're going to get a new door and it's going to be drilled out for both a handle and a deadbolt but for now just for security so we can store things in here i'm going to put the deadbolt and um, you don't need to see me take this handle out. It's the same as the one in the front, so I'm just going to do that, and we'll be right back. 
So here's our new deadbolt. Um, we're going to work on getting that installed. Got the old one out. The uh, first thing that we'll need to do is put our, our latch inside. That's in there perfectly. Okay. And then we have to kind of sandwich together these two pieces to hold them in place. So we'll try and get those to go in here. Yeah, we'll just use these. sure at this point that it's fairly level because we'll be tightening it down and then that won't be adjustable after it's tight which again it's not a big deal because this is just temporary but we do want to try and get it as close as possible all right so we want to connect our cable Well, it doesn't need it. Okay. Nice. Okay. We've got our lock in place. Perfect. So now we can start storing things in here. Okay, that was a lot of fun putting all those locks on. It's starting to feel like it's coming together a little bit. I uh, just got to get in there and, and do some painting. Um, then I got to find a, a sign and some graphics. But in the meantime, uh, we've got uh, these two computers from yesterday. I just have a little bit of an update on there. The 15-inch uh, with the bad battery. I did contact iFixit, which is where I bought that battery from when they brought it in the first time, and they were able to get that replaced under warranty, so that's great. The customer is not going to have to buy another battery, so they're mailing that in. It should be in hopefully this week, and I can get that swapped out for them. Uh, the other one, I did double check with them again, and they said that the issue that I thought it had is correct, um, which is that they plug the charger in, and then it just the light goes out and it won't charge. So I didn't have that issue with it. I plugged the charger in and it did charge the battery. So we're going to take another look at it, um, open it up, see if anything jumps out at us. So let's take a look. All right, so here's this computer again. Uh, so let's see if it is going to work for us today. All right, got our charger. And, yep, yeah, we've got our green light, orange light, and it looks like it's charging. So I'm just going to let that sit for a moment, and we'll see if it stays on. Okay, so I let it sit for a few minutes, and it is still charging, so we're just going to pop the uh, bottom off and just take a look and see if we can see anything. All right, let's see if there's anything alarming on the inside. Uh, no. It actually looks fine. I don't see any signs of liquid damage or anything, so, well, we'll keep looking. Okay, I, I do actually see a little bit uh, of stuff down there, so I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip and some alcohol. Yeah, I don't see any other 
major things. I, I am noticing though that we do have a missing uh, screw that's holding the motherboard in. So I don't think that's an issue by itself, but I am kind of curious where that screw is. So I think I'm just going to pop this motherboard out real quick and just check and see, make sure it's not shorting anything out underneath. I don't see any issues other than this piece of metal that just fell out of there. Uh, can you see that? I don't know where that came from. That could possibly have something to do with it. Everything else looks clean and not corroded and I don't actually see that screw in here anywhere. I'll go ahead and blow out this little uh, heat sink real quick though because it does have some dust in it. Alright, well this board's clean now so I'm just going to put it back go. Then we just got to put the battery in and the screws are broken off. So that's not going to have to get screwed back down. Okay. And our indicator lights come on so that's a good sign. Just one more quick check to make sure everything's in all the way and then we'll put our bottom cover back on. Okay. Let's see what happens. It's green. And it turned itself on. That's just a, a trick that I use whenever a computer turns on when you don't want it to. If you hold down uh, Alt or Option on the Mac, then it'll go into the Startup Manager, and then you can just force it off, and it's not going to damage anything because it's not actually started up in a, a writable mode off the hard drive so there's no problem doing that. And then I'll just go ahead um, actually and we'll start up off of Tech Tool. And we'll check the battery and just see how things are going with it. Start Tech Tool Pro. And we'll do a battery check. Okay, and it passed. Looks like we've got uh, 5,167 milliamp hour capacity with a uh, design capacity of 5,770, so we're almost as good as new. It says 89.5% of its original capacity. 735 out of a thousand cycles, so it is getting up there. And it looks like it is an original Apple battery. It was manufactured in 2014. So everything looks good. We'll go ahead and shut down and I'll just let it finish starting, or I mean charging. And uh, then we'll just give it back to the customer. We'll say no trouble found, couldn't reproduce the issue. And if they keep having problems with it, they can bring it back and we'll take another look. But as far as uh, things are going right now, I can't uh, think of anything else to do. So that pretty much wraps things up for today. Um, I'm going to contact that customer, like I said, and then I think I'm going to wrap up and go home for the day. So thanks for following me along today. Uh, I got a lot of stuff done. It was really productive. And uh, hopefully we'll have another productive day tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.